Okay. How's it going? to work nice okay cool yeah i just noticed that i think the twitch.tv i mean the the idea is that we would have a recording if we wanted to like share later with people who missed out on this okay so the goals of this hangout are to talk about react sorry one sec i'm gonna get some water and then we'll be right back yep and back um yeah so react testing library i i kind of asked nick like his uh do you mind like describing your familiar familiarity with it um both of you well uh it was on me or or nick Oh, sorry, uh, either. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so, uh, actually no experience whatsoever with, uh, React testing library. <laughs> uh, like, we have a React app job, but we usually use some, some other tools. We have, like, storybook for components and also, like, more, more complex, uh, integration tests for all applications so i'm actually quite excited to learn something something new maybe some new view on the on the topic of testing act awesome cool. so i was saying to before you came on henry i was saying to Linda, i've done a little bit of this before um i've been through a load of videos online about it and i've tried to start um bringing it into like a simple simple project and testing that and um, it was mostly done on um, class-based components so it'd be kind of interested if there's any more like up-to-date stuff like using the hooks it seems to be a bit more tricky to test some of the hook based stuff but yeah so i've done a little bit uh -huh. yeah. Awesome. yeah it's it's quite a pain in the React when like there's only only tutorials for like class class components and I'm rather using the functional style and hooks so yeah I know what you mean <laughs> yeah pretty much every tutorial you go or go to um is all based on the class based stuff but yeah. it's it's kind of fun to go th step through it anyway and you can usually kind of just convert it anyway mm -hmm. yeah. I was, uh, there's a good one I was doing, I've been doing over the weekend about Firebase and doing Firebase authentication. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it was all class-based stuff, and as I stepped through, I've managed to sort of mostly follow along anyway and just do it as well. I actually recently wrote an application using React Native and like Expo and uh, Firebase to that, and it was quite easy and all all in functional functional components and books yeah i was surprised how easy it was <laughs> yeah hooks are really nice um i think i personally i mean obviously i started learning with react classes um like a lot of people but then uh professionally started using hooks and i'm just pretty used to it the like the only okay maybe before i get into that i uh i was gonna say like i've seen some complications with if you're using react hooks and like context and then you have to do interesting things in your test to to get that working yeah that that i start i started trying to put it into a function a, a, a functional component that's kind of where it tripped up yeah um yeah, but um, I guess for Henry's sake, maybe we should dive into kind of... Yeah, start at the beginning. Yeah, at the beginning. <laughs> okay, so, thank you. <laughs> feel free to, feel free to um, Nick, since you have some experience with this also, like feel free to interrupt me if you think that 
um, I've not got that much experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean from you, you definitely have. I think, from a, yeah, beginner's perspective as well. Um, yeah. So my like, uh, my first uh, perspective of React Test Library is it's it's actually a pretty small library. Um, like if you're using it, the most common reference you'll probably be looking at is this page, the render. Uh, sorry, it, it starts, the render is like the most common function that you would need. Um, and here's an example where you you want to import like these certain functions from testing library React. Um, I think this is just on an ex extend expect is uh, an optional library. And then you have this, you write your test. This could also be it. Uh, yeah. It's not documented anywhere, so I remember being really confused. Wait, there's a describe and then an it and a test, but it and test are the same thing. Um, um, it depends uh, what you're using for testing. It's it's just I see see there. Yeah. Just John for testing. Yeah. So in just it's it's actually recommended in just uh, when you when you go like some basic with just it's it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's interchangeable it actually means the same thing yeah and it depends on your test syntax like if you want to write it should do something or if you want to write like test this and test the that you know mm -hmm. it depends on the style cool yeah i my understanding was that it was interchangeable <laughs> but i think that makes sense like it depends on your how you're like conceiving of your tests um, and there's, you can also like optionally wrap your tests around like a describe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. There are actually quite many options with, with just on this that like you can, you can do uh, describe and in there, like you can do before all and after all and it mm -hmm. and test and you can actually write it dot skip or it dot to do and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. uh, structure tests quite nicely we, we use it we use this uh, quite often at work even on backend but like the general structure is the same awesome <clears throat> yeah uh so react has never uses just and it also i think inherits from dom testing library um so sometimes like if there's a method that you don't have in here i'll like or I don't have in here, I'll kind of look into the DOM testing library API, uh, which is, yeah, up here. But essentially, like, oh, so in addition to this uh, API document, there is also a cheat sheet, um, which is actually the page I referenced the most. Um, and this table describes how there's, like, uh, you know, get by, find by. So, the kind of the tricky thing here is it doesn't I don't think it explains like when you would use all of these um, but my understanding after so Kenzie Dodds who is the creator of the react testing library came out with this um, common mistakes article in February um, and uh, I think he talks about Sorry, I'm typing with my left hand only because I sprayed my right hand and uh, so it's a little bit slow. Um, but two things um, I took away from this article is that in general, you should try using get by row. Um, and get by row means uh, you can think of it as like the row attribute in the HTML element, but mo more often is the case like the row attribute is implicit so if you wanted to like um, select an input text for example you do get by row and then the uh, row would be uh, I think it's called text box which applies to form uh, like in input box input boxes Okay, that, that's interesting. Um, the other thing is there's a screen. In these examples, he has 
uh, a lot of like screen dot get by row, which is not uh, hasn't been updated in the API docs quite yet. Where if you can see here, we have like a const, and then you're destructuring, for example, container and get by text, and then you're just doing get by text. But what we can the um, suggested way to do it in according to to this article is to not uh, not do the destructuring and use screen instead. So uh, okay. instead of doing like destructuring here, we're just rendering the component um, and then we're using screen dot blah blah blah. So we don't have to like remember, oh did we use a get by row uh, you know, method or another or get by text or a find by text, which I used to always like have to go back and try to remember to put into the destructuring if I forgot what I used. Yeah. And, um, like I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. do you know why, why they like switch, switch to use like this, like from destructuring to the screen? Like what's the practical reason? Uh, practically it just makes your life a lot easier when like as you're writing your test sometimes you don't know if you need um get by text on is only works if there is one of those in the document otherwise you have to use get all by text so oftentimes if there's like two of the same like if i'm doing get by text um you know some uh title yeah, I, I or yeah. yeah and it appears twice on the page and I forgot that it appears twice I'd have to uh, remember to change it to get all by text um, yeah. which returns an array and then I have to go back up and like add get yeah, all by text right. and then yeah, remove yeah. the get by text yeah it's yeah and now, now I see it there it's, it's much more practical yeah thank yeah. you so that was just like I mean initially when I first read this I didn't I somehow like missed what it meant and then the Coworker explained. I was like, "Oh yeah, that's really useful." Um, and then there are other things like don't use uh, if you only use the query all if you're um, oh like here it says don't use container at all to query for elements. Use get by row. So I think that's the again the new the new suggestion. Um, I don't remember if it's here or elsewhere, but there is one about like, if if you're checking that something is in the document, you check, you do like screen that, um, oh, here, here it is, right here, yeah. So if you're checking that uh, it's in the document, then don't use query, use get by. If you're checking that something is not in the document, then you, you want to use query. Which is just like a rule. Only use the query um, star variance for asserting that an element cannot be found. And that obviously is not documented in um, in the API as much. And another thing that I often um, find myself doing is after rendering the component, um, this is like getting into like tips and tricks territory also. Uh, I, I like doing a that screen that debug. And what this does, it, it prints out exactly what the testing library sees as its DOM. Um, yeah, which, which can be very helpful as you're like, mm -hmm. trying to figure out if it's actually loading what you expect it to load, um, after like certain interactions on, on the page. Oh, and the other thing <laughs> that I also have to discover is if for some reason you don't see like every part of the DOM, it means you have to um, 
do a debug limit. I think it's debug limit size. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So oh, it's there's some like ma maximum limit uh, for the for the debug output. Yeah. So you just. Uh, oh, sorry. Debug print limit. Um. So you run this like at the beginning of your. Uh, yeah thing and you might have to like even increase increase that mm. and then this ensures that if you're if you have like a really long page with lots of html elements that you're yeah that you can print out everything in, in your test um yeah is there anything that you, you want to add, uh, Henry or, or Nick? That... No, that's all pretty straightforward, I think. OK, cool. Um, oh, yeah. So I guess one thing we can like do is uh... sorry, my back is really hurting. <laughs> So I might have to like lie down in, in a bit, but um, one thing I started doing was uh, refactoring um, a test that I had written a little bit, and I can kind of show you like what I did. There's also, uh, yeah, I'll, hopefully this diff is large enough. So yeah, I removed the destructuring. Um, you screen that get by text, etc., and then query by for non-existence. I guess this could all I just wrote this call be like dot not dot to be no or dot not dot to be in the document. Um, oh, so I, one thing I learned was after you have something like a click event, for example, then you could do a wait and then find by um, to uh, as a way to like make sure that this click element has you know finished and then before you check. Yeah, that's actually quite clever. I, I, uh, yeah, if it's rendering the page by the JavaScript loop, it probably like, uh, waits for the, for the page to be reloaded. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah, so here I'm doing more destructuring. Oh, this was like, this was like one of my favorite changes. Um, yeah, so another thing is like, you don't need to wrap your fire events in a way to act. So the reason I was doing this is because I kept getting all these like, uh, warning, you need to wrap stuff in act messages. And to be honest, I'm still like, working through understanding uh, this, this warning. Um, Kenzie Dallas wrote an article about it, which I haven't uh, I've, I've, I think I've read only two thirds of the way through and it's basically this dreaded act warning uh, which I think it's it's pretty common and also pretty annoying and when you read it you think oh you're supposed to wrap all your fire events inside act but actually um, apparently what's it's number one it only appears like for if you have uh, functional like hook components um, and the other thing is the warning is actually telling you that you forgot to test something um, so in this case he add another await uh, wait for element to be removed and testing that you know that element has been removed to fix the warning yeah, so I'm still honestly like trying to understand, um, you know, trying to get better at 
understand exactly how to fix this warning in other cases. Uh, but one thing I did in my, you know, in this refactoring is at least like I removed it, removed it for the fire event and then uh, yeah and the test still passed without it um, I think sorry I'm trying to remember if I did anything else Yeah, but I'm I'm definitely not like finished with uh, with this file at all. Oh, I, I think what I did was um, here I just had like a wait and act. Or this is what I had before probably. Anyway, um, do you want to, uh, do you guys have any questions or want to talk about, uh, something else? Mm, I don't think I'm good. Uh, not sure about the act, but yeah, <laughs> otherwise it's... <laughs> What about you, Nick? Yeah, kind of the same. I've not run across that act thing yet. Sounds like it's a good thing so far. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, yeah, it has... It'll appear when you have, like, interactions um, that happen after, like, clicking. One other thing I just realized I haven't... There is another, like, um, library called User Event. Which is, um, which better simulates user events, like when you're typing on a form or clicking, and it's also made by Kenzie Dawes, the same author. Um, so instead of doing fire events dot change or fire event dot click, I'd import the library and then do like user event dot click, and then I'm selecting the thing that I want to click on. And they also have double click and like uh, element that clear. I'm not sure why this is async type. Oh, you're I guess you're typing into an, a text area, and then you're waiting that what you typed gets rendered out. Oh, uh, sorry, this is also a random tangent, but one thing that um, you have to be careful about that uh, Goro, he's a, another, uh, he's a contributor to like, uh, to this project. He, he was having trouble like um, getting this to run properly because after you click on the submit button, like this is a register form, right? Um, like he was adding timeouts here to try to like get this to pass. Um, because after you submit, you uh, this is you know called once, and it turned out that the reason he it wasn't passing wasn't because anything was wrong with like this test. It was because um, when initially when I wrote to select the button I like did like get by text submit and it selected the span element inside the button and not the actual button so the react testing library was clicking on the span but was not clicking on the actual button so nothing was submitted 
the um, have you used the get by text test ID? That's quite quite nice. Oh, the get by test ID. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the common actually that's that's something that you're supposed to only use as a last resort. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's definitely the easiest way to make sure it you're is, grabbing the right element. <laughs> it is. Uh, oh, we maintain a page called which query should I use? I'm going to... Oh, wow. I guess this is this page of like official documentation on what you should do. Oh, nice. So it does say get by row is like number one. And then get by test IDs is kind of as last because last resort <laughs> it goes against the principles of this is not something that the user can like see or hear so this is where you can like yeah match the other thing about the test ID is that you actually have to add extra HTML yeah it's not essentially needed yeah exactly okay so it is document that's good I wonder what's on the guiding principles page Yeah, I mean, overall, it's your testing like that the user sees certain text on the page. So like, even if you convert your components into from class to functional, or like, if you change your CSS stylings, then that shouldn't, and those implementation details shouldn't affect your tests. Yeah, uh, anything else <laughs> that we should talk about? So you mentioned um, that we're testing what the user sees on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, I had, um, you know, you can run the coverage and see what lines have been tested and what mm -hmm. not. So I had a kind of example where I was I had this component where I was passing something in as a prop, you know, as a number. Mm -hmm. And then within the component, there was a couple of functions that basically did something to the number mm -hmm. and it put it on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I did is I, I tested the, um, tested, the, tested the component that, you know, given a known input, this mm -hmm. is what we'd expect to see on the screen. Yeah. So it was testing the output of what we'd expect for that known number, mm -hmm. but what it's saying is that the that the the two functions where I was manipulating manipulating that number within the component mm -hmm. weren't part of the test coverage. Yeah, yeah. So do you, how um, would you would you th would you think that that needs to be tested, or do you or do you think it's suitable just to test the um, test what's visible? Yeah, the philosophy behind React Test Library is not to test the components, but to test the what the user sees. Um, and it, you 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 said that like the the input is something that the user types or. Um, yeah, yeah. So the input okay. maybe be something the user types or okay. or or something that's something that's known. You know, like a, for example, like um, say it was, uh, it was maybe it's like currency or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, so you input the number and you output it with the currency format and with mm -hmm. the commas and a, a currency symbol, for example. Okay, cool. Just something like that, example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, um, yeah, then I think then you'd be using get by text, right, to, um, sorry, I'm just, I need to reread the part where it says when you use get by row versus get by text. Um, because I remember him saying something about if you have like, for example, if your currency is inside a span tag next to your dollar amount, which is also inside an inner span tag, then does React Test Library know to, if you like search for dollar sign five, 
that it's in the ele- it's in document or um, will it have trouble? I, I don't know if what I said just makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if you had a different take or had seen anything kind of different. As to, it, the, the main reason it kind of flagged up to me is because when I was running the coverage, it was saying that particular mm-hmm. bit wasn't tested. Yeah. But I, I was testing the, the output of the functions, which kind of thought, oh, seemed a bit odd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's definitely a philosophy. It, it's it's the way that this library approaches testing. Um, but I think, yeah, other like testing philosophies emphasize unit testing of components more, right? Yeah, I, I, I just suppose if, if, if the focus is on just making sure that the user output's tested, mm-hmm. I guess it would be difficult to have some, some sort of arbitrary code coverage limit. You know, this thing needs to be tested. Mm-hmm. Is that you know, you're maybe testing the result of it as it's displayed in the DOM. Yeah. Yeah, you maybe. Not too sure. Wait, as in, like, you'd have to make sure that you're, uh, you write, like, a bunch of different test cases for uh, different user inputs? I, I, I don't know. It's certainly, you know, I've heard before, you know, Certainly, at work we've heard, I've heard before where this, you know, before we are, a PR is allowed to be completed or whatever, then you have to have ninety five percent code coverage. Mm-hmm. But the, in in this example, I was check, testing what was in the screen that was going through a function yep. within the component, but it said that the function wasn't being tested, but I was actually testing the output yes. of that function as it was displayed on the screen. So it was saying that that particular function wasn't and covered in the code coverage, which. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, um, it kind of was because I was testing what mm-hmm. came out of it and was displayed on the screen. I see. Um, so, you're you're saying that the code coverage um, was looking at the unit tests and not at the React testing library tests. So yeah. So. So the code coverage was looking when I ran, so yeah ran, so ran the when the when I ran the test runner with the the coverage flag, mm-hmm. it it was saying that the, the pointing out those lines of code hadn't been tested, mm-hmm. so the function within the component. I see. Um, yeah, I I kind of wonder like what code coverage library you're using in that case. So it was just I was just using the jest test runner. Okay. With the I think dash dash coverage flag. I see. Yeah, I. Maybe check out if there's some other options. Uh yeah, I mean I to be honest don't know. I I've never seen a tool for co coverage um with React testing library, so I'm curious. Yeah, so it looks like this is what you were running. Yeah, and then RTL yeah. does not collect coverage. What? NPM run coverage. And actually answer to this question exists. Okay, let's look at this. Do I even have a coverage in my project? I'm not quite sure. Okay, I don't.
Yeah, I'm going to put this on my list to explore later. seem too difficult just running just just coverage with some environment for JS DOM. Hmm. Oh environment is JS DOM and then yeah. coverage. It's uh, it's configurable option for just like the environment and it depends like uh, for example uh, when we use TypeScript uh, on the back end we use environment as node. For, for running just mm -hmm. so it's like TypeScript for, for Node.js. Do you think I should try this? It depends. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty much as I was running. Mm -hmm. I, was I, don't, I don't think you need the CI, CI through there, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that just the rule for something else. Um, do you, do you know when I would need like NPM run test versus NPM test? No, no, no. And you don't, you don't run test, you run G, yes. Or yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah. It's like you running, I mean. The, oh, right, 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 right. So it would be like just. You can actually do just, yeah. Just like like that. that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And this, this should be, this should be fine. Yeah. Test and, because test and start are built in scripts. You don't need to put the the run word in front of it. Um, I see. Yep. So it's just yeah. Just do NPM test, NPM run. Uh, test coverage. Yeah, seems to be your now your all your tests should run. Yeah, that's that's correct. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it should generate the report. So we'll see. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's it's running the report, and oh, cool. now we have it. And uh, you don't need to search in the console. It actually creates folder coverage in your project. So mm -hmm. uh, go there, go to your project in in VS Code or. Oh, I was expecting it to create a folder here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. And there is, uh, there is some. Um, Click in the L cover report. L cover. Yeah. There's a. There, you, there's, you can just open it. It's just it generates a website. Yeah. So just open the index page. Oh. Uh. And, not, and yeah, yeah. This one. Not here index. Yeah, and open it in browser. How do I get to the source? Uh, the, I think when you click. Uh, copy yeah. path. Here we go. Or a copy relative, remote URL probably. Yeah, that's that's my better. Uh, okay. No, that did not work. Uh, copy remote URL. Um, there is there is open open file open open file on remote. This for revision. Uh, is this oh first do I need the React app running because I don't have I don't think I have that running. No, you shouldn't need the React app. Oh, okay, running. it's just no uh, no no. That just uh, complete HTML like with everything. Um, okay. Uh, can you just maybe copy path? Copy path maybe. Yeah. Right, right. Here we go. Yeah yeah yeah. Nice. That's, that's yeah that's it. Cool. And. Now, now you can like go through your components, mm -hmm. like for example, search maybe or something, and like you can click and see uh, which part of the components are tested. You can go to the individual files, mm -hmm. uh, and you can see the lines, and it like marks you exactly the part of the code that that is not tested. So awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. And it even shows you how many times it got tested. So the pattern statement was called twice and the uh, prototype was called once. Mm -hmm. In your test. So uh, it's quite useful metric. It not so it 
like doesn't it doesn't like tell how how about your quality of your code <laughs> but uh, this can like yeah. hint you to uh, parts that might need some testing you know mm -hmm. like it's possible that like for example the excel you don't usually test your api calls you can mock them and stuff like that so you usually ignore this part but like well for it can show you the components that are not tested for example in every branch that they, they they do you know when you have component that has some loading state you know and return something else for loading state and something else for uh for the actual result you mm -hmm. this this shows you that for example loading wasn't tested or the like original part of the component wasn't wasn't tested or mm -hmm. something like that Cool, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I just noticed that, for example, like in login form, it's highlighting this, the parts that were not yeah. tested. Yep. Um, Redirect wasn't tested there, yeah, that's yeah. exactly. exactly. But the same thing is in sign up form, but for some reason, sign up form is like, has, it has a lower uh, percentage of functions. There are different, different things, like there's a statement testing, branches testing, and function testing, and line testing. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's uh, four, four different metrics, and uh, each one is for some like something else. Like lines, it tells you how many lines from how many lines. Uh, functions tells you like about if you called all your functions, the branches uh, part tells you if uh, you called all branches of your if statements or switch statements there, you know, mm -hmm. and it depends uh, what you want to focus on. Cool. Yes, I suppose in the scenario like I was talking about, if I really wanted, I could have just imported the function and just done a test for the function as well to get the coverage yeah, up. Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. Yep. Yeah, and you can. There is nice to see that, like the if part, it was it wasn't like a called upon because uh, out dot out tokens was never never true. So yeah, <laughs> it tells you even that stuff. Yeah, I'm impressed with this coverage thing. Yeah, it's pretty neat, isn't it? All right, excited to it test that. Too. To, it doesn't seem to matter what file the the tests are in either. You know, mm -hmm. there was one one component that I hadn't really intentionally tested, but through the course of testing all the other files, that 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 particular component was small and didn't have much in it and it was tested anyway mm -hmm. through the course of testing all the other ones um i'll be i'll be back in a minute <laughs> i need to lie down because my my back is hurting so one second <laughs> 